I welcome you all to this mega training, Millionaire School training. So before I start, I, I'm gonna share my screen. Of course, you all already know my name. My name is Dr. Victor Abalsin. You all are fully welcome to the training. You're welcome. Get ready, stay focused, don't be distracted, follow me all through to be able to release this. And for most of you here, I just discovered that even most leaders <laughs> are becoming too busy than even the mastermind. Because you tell them what they will do, they will not do it. They say, I'm busy, I'm busy. All right. I will not talk much about that. Let's proceed quickly on the training. Now, first of all, welcome you all. Please try not to be distracted. Try to follow me all through. This training may be, may be what will save you in the times of toughness, difficulties. It will be what will save you to save others. So it's not just about you. It's more equally about the people in your life. I will be saved because you knew this thing I'm about to show you. You maybe you know it before, but you don't understand it from this angle. So you can use it. It's not just you, but the people around you, their, their life will be transformed by the virtue of this understanding. That is it. Then after this training, all the leaders will repeat this training, even in the cell meeting, as a way of following through with everything we have done. That is it. So let's move on quickly on the training. You are all welcome to the Millionaire School training. Welcome you all. First of all, I wanna say is this. Every dream, we all have so many dreams. We all have things that made us join this system. We all have a reason that made us plug into this business. Let me let you know something very, very important. Something you will know is this, every dream, every dream that you see in your mind was given to, our mind was given to us by God. It's not just for you to, for that dream to become what? A vision. But it is for that not to become just a vision or television, but that dream was given to us for the purpose of accomplishing it. That dream that you see in your mind, it was given to you for the purpose of accomplishing it. That's why that dream came. But guess what? It's not just a television. You are saying, I'm seeing this, I'm seeing what I will do, I'm seeing this, a television. People are not converting it. Why it's not being converted is because it did not go through a process. For every dream to be what? Accomplished. It must go through a process. Now, what burns down now is this. Here it is here, clear. For every dream that you have, there is no elevator that takes you to the success of achievement. There is no elevator, here it is very well, that takes you towards success. No elevator. Somebody said, man, I just joined this business. I know that this business, bah, with this business, I, next thing, by this time, next month, you will be a multi-millionaire. No. There's no elevator that takes you to success. Guess what? Every successful people you see in life, call their names. Warren Buffett, Bill Gates, Jack Welch. Let me come down to Nigeria. Guess what? Adenuga, call their names. Ambassador Michael Okul, let me come down. The people you know, your mastermind, your top leaders, the G leaders, guess what? They all pass through the ladder of success to get to the top. They all pass through the ladder of success 
to get to the top. There is no elevator that pia, took them to where they are. They stepped in one after the other, one after the other. They were climbing through the ladder of success. Now, guess what? You must understand that this, that life will not grant you success. I'm trying to make you understand the steps. Everybody you see, they, they pass through some things that made them got to where they are. And life will never grant you success based on your age or your background or even your ethnicity. Most importantly, your religion. Life will never grant you success based on what your age, your background, your ethnicity, or your religion. Life will not give you success because of that. Guess what? The question I'm asking now is, why is it that most people you see, most of us, everybody here wanted to be successful, just like the business we have started. Everybody want to make it to the top. Everybody want to accomplish this dream. Why do we act as if life will give you what you deserve? I've seen a lot of people here I say, man, this since I started this, I've not seen anything since I've started. In fact, I've done this business for three years. I'm not making anything. And the same person, if you check him, check what he has done, you will discover that what exactly have you done? Why do we act like as if life will give us what we deserve? Life does not give you what you deserve. Everything, everybody you see that achieved anything to an extent in life fought his way to that level. Why are you acting? My leader did not do this. You people need to be doing this. You people, oh, our leaders need to be doing this. Why are you acting? Some of us here listening to me have given up in this business. You've lost the hope of it because of your upline some of you here as i speaking you gave up in this they say because of c2 and fg as i'm asking all of you what makes you think that aim group has supplies everything we need to build this business why are you acting as if life will give you what you deserve if you are getting anything from anybody if you are getting anything from your leader, if you are getting anything from your upline, if you are getting anything, it is a privilege. Take it as a privilege. Life was built for you to fought your way to the top. That is the way life is built. You must have this great understanding. You must fight your way to the top. That is it. Why do we start our dream? You have a beautiful dream. Why do you start your dream? You have a beautiful dream and you just started this dream. But guess what? After some times, if you don't see progress, if you don't see, you don't, you don't see anything happening gradually in the dream, if you don't see anything that is manifesting, guess what happens to you? You give up. Man, man, I tried. This thing is not working. And meanwhile, meanwhile, you have seen a lot of people that pass through the same process. They pass through the same process. They made it to the top. They pass through the same process. They became whom they are today. Guess what? You started your dream, and after some time, if you didn't see anything happening in the dream, if you didn't see any progress, you gave up. This person used to come around in the office, so he used to come all of a sudden. You are no longer seeing the person say, man, this thing is not easy. Uh, nah, 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 nah. Ladies and gentlemen, that is why I'm doing this training titled, The Examination of Life. That's the essence of this training. 
the examination of life. The examination of life. First and first is this. Every increase in every sphere of life comes with an examination. Any day you see somebody that from the level of this particular place, he shifted to the next level. He passed through what examination of life. And when he passed it, that was why he shifted. If he didn't pass it, he remained at the same level. The examination of life. Guess what? There is nothing that will change in your life except it passes through what? The challenge that makes it to change. It's out of challenge comes the change. You wanted to be this, you wanted to be that. You wanted to be this, you wanted to do this. It must pass through because what you are looking for is what? Increase from where you are. Everybody deserves an increase. Everybody wanted a change. Everybody wanted a life. Everybody wanted success. But guess what? They don't want to go through any change that will make them succeed. People don't want that change. There is nothing that will change except it, ex, except it passes through the challenges. When you see a goal, before a goal turns to be a goal, it passes through fire to get it refined, to be a goal. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to let you know that the reason you are still where you are is that you have refused to allow yourself to pass through the what? The challenges. The challenges was coming. The examination was coming and you, you, you don't want it. No, 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 no. You don't want, no, 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 no. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, get this clear. The reason you are in your current low position today is because of the exam you refuse to go through. You refuse to go through your examination. <coughs> Listen carefully. You, you don't want it. Some of you have been given a tax of what you will do. When you look at it, look at it. Ah, oh, no. Oh, no, I cannot. Oh, ah, I'm busy. Oh, no. I'm busy. I can't. In fact, uh, you don't understand. You don't want it. Don't tell me you still wanted this thing and you don't want to go through the process. You refuse to go through the examination. Ladies and gentlemen, you must understand it very well. Every next level requires a change. Every next level. And if you refuse to go through it, guess what? It doesn't come to you. For some of us here, maybe you started it, but you didn't pass it. I will still talk about that. Get this very well. To every examination taking, to every examination taking, there is an increase in pressure. There is an increase in pressure. Some of you are facing your exam, you are facing a lot of pressure, you are facing a lot of temptation, maybe in your family, you are facing this one, it may be anywhere, and guess what? He said, no, 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 this is too much. To every examination, there is an increase in pressure. Currently, guess what? Our business changed to what? Another what? Come plan. Guess what happened? The pressure increased on everybody. Do you know what happened to most people? A lot of people, even the leaders, gave up because they are not ready to go through the pressure. You were making such and so amount. Guess what happened? From such and so amount you were making, it whole went down. And guess what? You are passing through a fire and you don't want to pass through the fire. What did you do? You gave up. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I'm saying it again. To every examination of life, there is an increase in pressure. Pressure of life. There's a pressure that comes to you. Let me tell you, it's the pressure that makes people give up. It's the pressure that makes people not, con not to continue. This thing is too much. You see, this is the way life is designed. 
it's not me that designed it. But if you understand that, man, this is what I'm going through my trial time. I'm going through my examination time. Life is trying to confirm whether I truly wanted this. Remember what I said you, anything you have ever imagined in your mind, Every, anything you have ever seen, maybe you've seen yourself driving what? Having what? an aeroplane, an aircraft. You've seen yourself having logs, houses, estates of, with houses everywhere. That thing that entered your mind was given to you for the purpose of you accomplishing it. <laughs> but it cannot just come to you. It cannot just come to you. Guess what? Any day you start going through your exam, any day you are expressing pressure, have it in your mind, pressure, 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 have it in your mind that you are taking an exam. There's an examination that is going on. And guess what? <laughs> if you give up on the pressure, you failed. But if you pass through the pressure and overcome, you pass, you move to the next level. Ladies and gentlemen, which exam are you currently going to? Which exam are you currently passing through as I speak? Name it. I don't know what you are going through as I speak. I don't know what you are experiencing now as I speak. I don't know the pressure you are, uh, you are facing that to the point of giving up. Ladies and gentlemen, we have so many of the examination, examination of relationship. You are starting a new relationship and guess what? There are facing a lot of challenges. You people need to understand each other. Guess what? The examination of relationship. Some of you, two of you may not be able to condole each other. What happens? Two of you will give up on the relationship. We quality have examination of business. You just started a new business. Some of you here are new people. And guess what? You are expressing pressure. Pressure. And guess what happened? Oh, man, this business will not work. Oh, ah, this business is not easy. A business you just started. You wanted to shift up. Oh, no, no. You are already giving excuses. What you are trying to do is you don't want to continue that business. Some of you are facing the examination of leadership. Examination of leadership. You became a leader. Guess what? In the business, you are trying to what, carry your team along. You are trying to build your team along. And guess what? All of them are looking at you as if you don't know what you are doing. Some of you started building a team currently. You are not guiding them. Anytime you speak, they are not following you. Or maybe you are becoming too harsh. And you are asking yourself, hi. Now, wow, all my people, they don't listen to me. They don't follow me. You are going through examination. And if you pass that examination, guess what? You see yourself to the next level. Some of you are going through examination of success. Something has started entering. When the money started entering, guess what? You don't even know what to do with you. You started seeing a lot of people signing in your business. Your success is about to break through. Guess what happened? You cannot even accommodate it again. You cannot even condole it. Man, the success is becoming too much. A lot of people are signing in your team, but you cannot handle it. A lot of people are coming, but you cannot handle them. You cannot put them where they should be. Guess what? If you fail that examination, guess what? Your business went backward. But if you pass this, you move into the next level of success. What pressure are you experiencing? Let me tell you, it's not just about the success, but the question is, if it comes, can you handle it? That is the question. Some of you are, are experiencing the examination of next level. Examination of next level. You've been in this particular level for a long time, man. Next level is coming. Now, these days, you are no longer sleeping very well because you have a lot of things in your head. Ladies and gentlemen, for every next level, guess what? There's a next increase. You don't fail an examination of next level and expect to be promoted. 
Our business was designed that if everybody in this business passed this ED 3.0 that just started, we all move to the next level. That was why the pressure was on increase. What pressure are you currently facing now? Is a question I'm asking you. I repeat again, you don't fail an examination of next level and expect to be promoted. Nobody will give you that promotion. Life will not say, okay, let's just pity him. Let's allow him to increase. No, even if you increase to the next level, you will see yourself coming down again because you can't handle it. There are a lot of leaders, when we looked at them, what do we do? It's okay, um, okay, it's all right. Let us just make him an unstoppable leader. Just because we just say, let's just make him an unstoppable leader. Do you know what happened? We, he be, they became an unstoppable leader, but when the pressure came, they went backward. There are a lot of leaders. Let me explain something to you. There are a lot of leaders, maybe this, you're a leader, an unstoppable leader became a leader, but the people in his excess leg is becoming too much. One leader is rising there. Maybe that leader have not yet reached to the position of leadership. And guess what? He's facing a lot of pressure. And we say, okay, let us make this person an unstoppable so that this person at the top will not go with him so that he can actually rest. Making the other person that have not yet reached to the qualification. When the person gets to that higher level, when the pressure comes, guess what? The person still gets demoted. What pressure are you facing? That's a question. Get this. The reason people, the reason different people are in different level of life, the reason most people are in different level of life is because of the examination they passed or failed. Finish. The reason you are where you are, let me tell you, that thing you wanted, God can do more than that. In fact, it can even do, you've never imagined. You can't even imagine what God can do more, more than what God can do. What you are thinking is in finistesima to what God can do in your life. But the question is, when the examination of life comes, can you be able to pass it so that I can assess that thing you wanted? Everybody here wanted to be a multi-millionaire, multi-millionaire. Can you handle it? Some of you here, if money start entering, if they start making over one million naira a month, some of you here, you will turn to what a principalities and power. Everybody around you will become like children. You are speaking to some people. I have a lot of leaders that got to that level, but guess what? They couldn't sustain it because they have not yet right to get into that level. If some of you here become a monthly millionaire, can you handle it? Or will you start puffing up, being so proud, start talking to people anyhow? People will become like vegetable in your face. You won't tell you, but can you handle it? Can you be able to take the responsibility behind it? That's a question. The reason you are where you are today is because of the examination of life you either passed or failed. Some of you, as I speak, are at the verge of giving up in the business. Meanwhile, God is about to take you to the next level, but you are at the verge of giving up. What examination are you currently facing? That's a question. From the creation, let me tell you something. This thing has started from creation. Right from the creation of Adam and Eve, Right from the creation, when God finished everything, guess what? He created Adam. He set up an examination of loyalty in the Garden of Eden. Told God, Adam, everything in this place belongs to you. But guess what? This particular fruit, don't eat it. I don't understand. You said that everything in this house, I can do everything with it. But don't go and touch this particular fruit. I don't understand. Why? That was the examination. To know how loyal you can be, even after I have given this thing to you. Examination of loyalty. Of course, you know this, the rest of the story. Adam failed what? The exam. What happened? 
He was chased out of the garden of Eden. What exam are you, is life currently pushing you? If the examination of life started from creation, what it means is this. The first being on earth faced it and failed. What it means is everybody in life must. Hear this. <laughs> Get this clear. There is no shortcut. There is no two ways about it. Everybody in life must face the exam. You can't run away from it. You can't run away from it. Guess what? Abraham was given an examination to become the father of many nations. Thank God he passed. Yes, he passed. How can God give you a son? You've been praying for years. And God gave you that son at the old age. You're already approaching almost 100 at the age where you cannot give birth to another child. And the same God that gave you the same son demanded for the same son that you should sacrifice it. I don't understand. <laughs> if it is you, will you pass it? But guess what happened? Abraham passed the exam. And guess what happened? He became the father of what? Many nations. Today, every seed of blessings on earth came from Abraham. Every, I didn't say some, every seed of blessing on earth came from Abraham just because he passed the examination of life that was given to him. Some of you have been tested, tried, and you failed. Guess what? Jesus Christ passed through the examination to save the world. If God himself have to allow his only son to go through an examination, <laughs> you can't run away from it. That's why for somebody like me, any challenges I see around my life, any situation I'm experiencing, I see it as a phase to shift to the next level because it, that is actually the truth. If I pass, if I pass this challenge, I can't remain at the same level I used to be. Jesus Christ passed through the examination to save the world. Now, let me tell you about Jesus. He has the power to destroy. He, imagine when the whole power is given in your hand and those you are looking at somebody you can torture. Somebody you can just, you don't even need, all you need is just imagine it, it will start happening. He has the power to destroy even the world and the people <laughs> he has the power over wanted to kill him. If it is you, what, now think about it. Think about it. A time came he wanted to give up. But he didn't give up. Today, he saved the world. He passed through his exam. If God has to send his son, <laughs> forget about whatever you're experiencing in life. It's just an examination of life. And let me tell you, every exam given to you, he had it very well, was given to you because God believed that you can actually pass it. You cannot be given a temptation that is greater than you. That is it. And any, any exam that was given to you was given to you because of what you wanted in life. Because of what you wanted. Because of that dream you have dreamt. That thing you wanted. That dream. Oh, I wanted to be this. Oh, I want to be making eight-figure income. And oh, I wanted to be able to help so many people in my community. It's a big dream. And guess what? The exam will come according to what the dream you wanted to achieve. And let me tell you, if you fail it, it's not for you. The dream is not for you. Who has passed through examination of life? Do I talk about Job? Let me tell you, Job was already wealthy. But guess what? God passed him through examination to of next level. Job in the scripture, examination of next level. Guess what? 
everybody around him left. He refused to give up on his God. He refused to give up. Guess what, ladies and gentlemen? Job became 10 times bigger than he was when he finally passed the exam. Ladies and gentlemen, I can cook. So talk on and on. Let me come down. Even me, yours truly, the person you are looking at, I passed through the examination of life. Do you know the hell I faced? And I never give up. Let me tell you, every examination given to you, that exam was given to you so that hear this very word. Every life challenges, every life experience that was given to you, it was actually given to you so that you, through you, life can be easier for every other people are under you. That's why that challenge was given to you. So that you can make life easier for the people under your lead. That's why it, why it was given to you. But guess what? A lot of us here, we are passing the exam. And also, a lot of us here are failing the exam. And it's like testing. Somebody, when it's like testing, you just say, you start giving up. Man, you people need to be encouraged. Let me tell you, life doesn't operate like that. Ladies and gentlemen, what challenges of life are you currently facing? It's a question. Guess what? The reason you have not yet broken through to the next level today is because life is testing you to know whether you truly wanted that thing. That is why some of you might be just to recruit people in your business. You started the business, since you started the business, you've not yet getting any single sign up. And you've test for one more. I have brought in all my lists. Nothing has happened. But look at this. This you've brought in all your lists. Nothing happened. Then another person brought his list. Over over fifteen people have signed it. <laughs> Are you seeing that? So why did this person sign? Why did this person didn't sign? The examination of life. Somebody say I have built everybody in my team. But my team was growing. Now let me tell you, for me personally, a time came. Everybody in my team crashed. I built a very mighty team in Benin. You know what happened, ladies and gentlemen? All of them crashed out. I have to start all over again. Today, as I speak, even in that same Benin, if you don't know the number of people under, still under me that are in the same Benin, what if when everybody in Benin, when all of them crashed out, I say, ah, there is no need to, ah, there is no need to, if everybody I have built have already given up, why am I even in the business? Maybe I would have given up. But guess what? I didn't give up. I didn't quit. Because I understood that this is my cause. And I must go through it. Don't cry up a crier because you are facing whatever. That thing came because of what you truly wanted in life. Ladies and gentlemen, get this clear. We are so, have so many of the tests. You are tested on integrity, relationship. When any test of integrity is done, guess what? Is an what? A test for relationship that was given. Test for integrity. Some of you here, somebody puts more money in your account. <laughs> Examination of life. And guess what? To bring out the money, you are not talking another story. You're already breaking a lot of things. And guess what? That means some things will not continue. Test examination. Guess what? Some of you here, somebody that want to sign into your business, you told the person send the money to uh, the company's account. So no, no, I want to send it to your account. Now, exam is examination. To know whether when they send it to your account, one story or the other will come. Let me tell you, it's life that is testing. It may not be that person testing you, but life. Why would you say you will send it to my account? When I say send it to the company's account. <laughs> examination of life your integrity test is is done relationship test guess what the reason you have not yet broken through to the next level is because of the life because life is testing you to know whether you truly wanted what you desire that is it some of us are going through what leadership test a lot of responsibility we are giving to you because once you you crave for leadership what you are craving for is what responsibility <laughs> and then that responsibility was given to you, you started complaining. 
you started complaining. Ah, is it only me that will be running the presidential? Ah, is it only me that will be doing this? Ha, ah, is it only me? Now, let me tell you, when it comes to leadership tests, you may even be tested with people that are not under your watch, that are not under your lead, that are not under your team. What did you do? You gave up. You gave up. It simply means this person cannot carry this load. If he failed, I gave him an opportunity to be able to lead this set of people. Look at this set of people. Let him lead this set of people. I gave him the opportunity. But guess what? God's life said he couldn't do it. <laughs> so how can I give him this? He wanted to be this. But I gave him an opportunity to lead. Lead people that are not in your team. You gave up. Tomorrow, you say you wanted to be a leader. Some of you here listening to me, it might even be in your team. A lot of people came under your team. When they are coming to you, you start, your body is already, oh, stop disturbing me. What are you going to do? What are you doing? By the time you understand this, everything that comes in your life, see it. He said, it's, it's like this is another examination that is coming. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, the earlier you understand this, the faster you come through the life challenges that comes in front of you. But let me tell you, there is nothing that comes in front of you that you can never, cannot overcome. You are more powerful than you even ever imagined. You don't even know that. You are more powerful than you imagined. Leadership responsibility test, you couldn't pass it. Some of you, I say, handle this thing. Take care of these people. Please do this for them. Do this for them. You will sneak out. You sneak out. You are dodging it. Okay. <laughs> you can't pass it. And what it means is you can't shift to the next level. Because let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, God can only hand over some things in your hand only when you have passed the examination of life. That's only when God can hand over some things in your hand. Some of you are going to what financial potency test. Some of you, as I speak, a time came, a lot of money was flooded in your hand. You got a lot of money in your hand, but you don't know how to handle it. You wanted that finance, the money came, but when it came, you were so stupid. You don't know how to what, arrange, harvest, keep it in order. You use the money you started was spending recklessly. You are spending recklessly. The outcome is that you are attracting. Poverty is what you are attracting because if you don't have the finance, what you have is what? If you, don't, if you lack money, if you don't have money, you lack money. It's two things. <laughs> That's why you see a lot of people. I get them before. <laughs> I used to have money before. Before, if you come to my garage, you will see. If you come to this place, you will see. In fact, if you the level of money I have, let me, let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, you were tested and you failed. You failed test. And let me tell you, it takes a grace of God to return back for that test again, for you to move to the next level. That is it. Some of you here that speak, it was an activity test, consistency activity test. What do I mean by that? We gave you an activity you will be doing daily so that you can break through to the next level. But you started that activities, but you are not consistent to do it. What happened is that you cannot enter that next level you wanted. Consistent activities plus consistency is what? Breakthrough. That is the truth. Con activities plus consistency is what? Your expectation. That is it. Activities plus consistency is what? Your dream coming through. That's what it means. If somebody employs you in an organization and told you when you will be doing what you'll be doing, gave you an activities and told you you'll be coming to work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday only. Guess what? And you started Monday, 
excuses. Tuesday you came, Wednesday you don't come. Let me tell you, you are already breaking what? The agreement. You are, you are already breaking your expectation. Some of us here, that is what life is testing you. You wanted that next level. You wanted freedom. But guess what? You are not ready to pass through what it takes. The process of achieving freedom. To every freedom given. Write this down. To every freedom given, there is a process. To every freedom given to you, there is a process. No freedom will be given to you without a process. That is the truth. What are you currently facing? I want you to understand this thing before I start moving towards the ending part of this training. There are several core things to remember. Seven core things to remember when you are going through what? Your examination of life. There are seven core things. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, before I continue. You see, there is nothing in life that you have ever faced that nobody has not faced and overcome. <laughs> Did you hear me? There is nothing in life that you have ever faced. The same thing you faced, another person faced it and overcame it. So don't give excuses. That's why I was telling people, you see, People that are not making progress are making something. What is that thing? Excuses. People that are not making progress, they must be making something, and that is excuses. Then people that are making what? Progress are not making what? Excuses. That thing you are complaining, ta 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 to 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 Man, you know I'm busy now. My work, my work. There is somebody that is more busy than you and started this same business. And guess what? He still overcame, he still became successful and became who he is today. Ask it. Somebody say, man, I have tried this thing several times, so it's not working. Come on, come on. What is not working? For as long as you are there, every challenge is, every failure is leading you closer to your what? Success is leading you closer to your success. So keep facing it. Anytime I remember the story of Thomas Edison, I kept on wondering, how can somebody try something for 999 times? What is actually pushing the person? Is it somebody encouraging him or what? <laughs> if it is you that is encouraging him, is you stuff who even give up? What is encouraging him is himself. He believed in his what dream. Remember, he had a dream, the dream of inventing what light bulb. He believed strongly in his dream, and life started testing him to know whether he truly wanted this. Can you imagine the right brothers, the right brothers? Looking at what? Um, birds flying on the air. Birds flying on the air. And they started imagining it is possible for us to build something, an aircraft that will be flying people on the air. Can you imagine that? The right brother. Today, aeroplane came out because of a dream somebody imagined in his mind. Let me tell you, there is no dream that was given to you any dream that was given to you was given to you for the purpose of you accomplishing those dreams. There are seven core things you must remember any challenges you are going through. Whenever you are going through the examination of life, these are the seven core things you must remember. If you always remember this, trust me, you will overcome. Whether it's this business, it might even be this business. Somebody said, man, this thing have dealt with me. Hi! This last month, do you know that I did not make even one naira? <laughs> there are people that have done, the, started the business, they stayed for three years. They didn't make one naira. And today they became the richest people in the world. 
Yes, three years. Your own is one month. So there are seven core things you must remember when you are going through examination of life. Number one, always have it in your mind. It's not going to be easy. If it is easy, everybody in the world will pass it. Always remember, I know it's not going to be easy. If it is easy, everybody in the world would have passed it. That's number one. It, this thing, this, this word, this first word is, it gives you more hope and belief to, for you to be the one that will cross through. It's not going to be easy. If it is easy, everybody in the world will pass the exam. If it is this business that you are facing challenges of life, to ask yourself, why is it that everybody that started this business, all of them are not yet more time millionaire? But there are people that became that multi millionaire. And if, guess what? It's not easy for them to make it. Guess what? If it is not easy and I'm facing through my examination, I will cross over. That's the first thing. Remember this. It's not going to be easy. The second thing you must remember is this. It's only the people that are determined and prepared will pass the exam. It's only if I am determined that would make me pass. Am I ready to go through these challenges? I will go through it. I will overcome. It's only if I am determined and prepared. That is the only time I will pass through the exam. Always remember this. Only the people that are determined, only the people that are prepared, these are the people that will pass through this exam. Remember this very well. Guess what? People that are not prepared, people that are not determined, we fail. <laughs> so when you are at the verge of giving up, always know that everything you start and you give up is because you are not prepared <laughs> and because you are not determined. <laughs> if you are determined, forget it. Forget it, you overcome it. In fact, even life that is testing you will get tired of testing you. <laughs> you don't understand life. That is it. Only the people that are determined and prepared will pass this exam. And you'll touch yourself. Touch yourself. Tell yourself, I will cross through it. Everybody here, just type, I will pass through it. Only the people that are determined. Only the people that are prepared will pass through it. That's the second one. Then the third one is this. I must be patient and never give up. I must be patient and never give up. These are the reason why people gave up in their examination of life. Because they are not patient. They wanted a sharp shout. They wanted it immediately. And it didn't come immediately. Let me tell you, if you jump into another thing, trust me, that same place you and jump into you will face another one. <laughs> it may not come from the angle this one came, but guess what? You will face another one there. And you must be patient and never give up. Everybody in the world wanted what? Instant. You see, we are in an era of social media. Social media. Era of you wanted to what? Somebody to what? Hell you. You send something in the Facebook. You are checking to check whether people liked it era of social media gratification but let me tell you if you must pass through the examination of life you must let learn not to look at what people are saying <laughs> you must learn not to look at what people are saying you must learn not to look at what your facebook is saying what people are look at so many people are saying like i like it in very so many people say no in the facebook if you must overcome your examination of life, you must listen to yourself and not listen to what others are saying. We are in an era where most people do something according to what people are responding in the platform, what people are saying in the Instagram, what people are saying in the WhatsApp platform. This is the era the world is into. 
We are in an era where most people wanted it immediately. Quick, 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 quick. Sharp, 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 sharp. Nobody wanted, he don't want, he don't like being patient. This is the era the world is. But let me tell you, patience is a virtue. Patience is, is not taught. You build it in yourself. Patient is not taught, it's built. <laughs> Patient is not taught, it is built. If you are checking people's response to build your patient, you will give up. You must be patient and never give up. I've been listening to social media, Facebook, what they are saying. You are, some of you are, are busy. You are doing, you're living your life according to what they said in what social media, according to what they said in what Instagram, according to what you, you can't be, the richest people you know in the world, they don't live according to social media. They don't understand this mystery. <laughs> Whatever you will be in life, let me tell you, if you must become that exceptional person in life, you must do what others are not willing to do so that you can get what they cannot get. If you must become a mortal millionaire in this system, you must be ready to do what others are not willing to do. Everybody are saying no, 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 no. And you are saying yes. So that when they will start saying there is a cast down, you are talking about lifting up. I must be patient and never give up. That's the third one. Then the fourth one is what? I must see myself passing through the exam. You already facing a lot of prior. You are telling yourself, <laughs> you see this? I'm, I'm already on stop it. I leave this thing. No, don't worry. I am going through it. I understand it's not easy. I understand it's not so easy like that. But I know that I will overcome. Yes. 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 In the world, there might be a lot of things, but guess what? I will overcome it. Ladies and gentlemen, see yourself passing through the exam. See yourself be overcoming. See yourself becoming what? A conqueror. See yourself becoming that thing you have dreamt. Even when nothing is showing that you will overcome, but see yourself overcoming it. Then the next one is what? When you are passing through the exam, hear this very well. When you are passing through that life challenges, make sure you are not alone. Did you hear this? <laughs> this is what the enemy strategy of destroying you is what? Setting you alone. <laughs> make sure you are not alone. Surround yourself with winners. Surround yourself with people that have overcome their life challenges. We have discovered that in life, when anybody is facing any challenges in life, guess what happened? They will separate themselves from people that will deliver them, deliver him. They separate themselves from life challenges. They separate themselves what? From those people that would have given them hope to overcome. The outcome is that they will give up in life. Have you wondered, let me ask you a question. Have you wondered why somebody will just commit suicide? Have you wondered that? Why would somebody take his life? I don't understand. You understand me? Why would somebody decide that I'm tired of life? I'm tired of living. <laughs> okay, I want to end it now is when he's alone. If the enemy want to finish you, hear me? <clears throat> he will separate you to stay alone so that you'll be nursing it, nursing it, and then the enemy will be giving you some negativities that will make you out to come out. You are finished. <laughs> People are calling you on phone. Guess what you will do? You will not pick the phone. People want to come and see you say, no, I don't want anybody to see me. I just want to be left alone. Whenever you are left alone and you are passing through challenges of life, you are finished. That time you are facing through the challenges, that is the time you should what? Bring out yourself. 
Surround yourself with winners. Surround yourself with those people you believe. Let them know what you're going through. Let them stay around you. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the only time <laughs> you can overcome. But if you separate yourself from the people that have overcome that challenges, you cannot overcome. Ladies and gentlemen, what I'm teaching you here will not just help you in this business. It will help you in your life what challenges, anything it is. Don't never, ever be alone. Never, ever be alone. I want everybody here to type, I must not stay alone. Just type it, I must not stay alone in my challenges. When you see a lot of our leaders that have built a business through a certain level, after building your business to a certain level, guess what? The enemy will start giving you a thought of you. Man, leave this business, face another thing, now try another thing. This is somebody that have built something for a long. Guess what happened? Enemy will not tell you the positive things you have achieved. It's only the negative things that you'll be seeing. <laughs> negative, negative, negative. Enemy will not tell you you are alive. There is hope. Enemy will be telling you, man, you don't have any other reason to live. Look at the business you have done for three years. What have you achieved? The little you've achieved, you have used it to even pump into the business. Some people did something for three years. They didn't make one naira. Today, they became the richest people in the world. That is it. What is that life challenges? that you are facing and you exempted yourself from the people that will save you. That is it. It's a question. I'm going to play something quickly and guess what? With what I'll be playing, I'll be showing you people some people have faced a lot. Our, our, I was doing a training. I, I showed somebody, if this young man and one of the richest man in the world, one of the richest man in the world, guess what happened? Let me tell you the story. When he was facing his challenges today, he became the richest man in the world. But do you know what happened? When he was facing through life challenges, guess what? He was already almost at the verge of giving up, but he didn't give up. How can somebody start a business, borrowed money, and start a business with $50,000? After starting a business with $50,000, do you know what happened? For the first three years, he did not make one night, one dollar. First three years, he didn't make one dollar and he still kept on believing in his business. That is it. Today, the same person, do you know what? Today, the same person is the richest man, one of the richest man in Asia. I'm going to play this thing so that most of you here may likely understand. Maybe it will be like a, a, a boost to you. Anytime you are going through life challenges, you always remember this. Pay absolute attention. Listen carefully to this before I continue and end this meeting. Remember, I'm still showing you the things you will focus when you are passing through life challenges. Now, listen carefully before I continue. Pay absolute attention. This is a story of what? One of the richest men in Asia. Look at his story. Pay attention as I continue. You must not stay alone. That challenge is you can overcome it. That is it. Listen attentively as this plays. Pay absolute attention. Listen to him. I did not have a rich father. I tried three times for university, all failed. I applied for Harvard for 10 times, all failed. They don't even want to see me. For the last time, I went to the teacher's college, which was considered the third or fourth class of my city. So I applied jobs for 30 times, I got rejected. It was so difficult at that time. I was so frustrated because I taught in the university. My pay was $10 a I month. I didn't have a rich because father. I could not find a good job. In 1995, I'm going university. to do all field. I applied for Harvard for 10 times. 
all fail. They don't even want to see me. For the last time, I, I went to the teacher's college, which... Okay, just, just follow me carefully on this. At that time, I was so frustrated because I taught in the university. My pay was $10 a month because I could not find a good job in 1994, discussed that I'm going to do something called internet. And 23 of them against it. They said, this is a stupid idea. We have never heard about internet and you know nothing about computer. And I never thought I was smart. Nobody believed that I could be successful because everybody said, well, this guy think differently, think crazily, you know, they think about something that never worked. I tried to borrow 3,000 US dollars from the banks. It took me three months, but I still cannot get it. I talked to over 30 or 40 venture capitalists. Everybody said, no, forget it. A lot of people said Alibaba is a terrible model. As I said, I believe it. I think this thing could be big if we keep on working. I never thought it would be that big like today. But I believe that something, something is waiting for me there. And I have to work hard to prove myself. That was the tough experience. So we gather 50,000 US dollars from 18 founders. 50,000? We started. Hmm. For the first three years, we did not have even one dollar revenue from our business. Hey. It's not easy. You don't make any money. You've got extraordinary claims. And yet you make nothing. That's internet. Yes, but what's the point? Are okay. you a millionaire? Now? No. Do you want to be? Well, well uh, I, think, I hope. Try! Why it keeps uh, going ahead, going forward? Because I received lots of email of thanks from the customer. They say, this is such a great thing. We cannot pay you, but this thing helped us. If you keep on helping us, one day you will be successful. And I believe this. Little by little, we build up our business. Little by little, we build up our ecosystem of the infrastructure. And now, after 16 years, we have an Alibaba group, we have a Tmall group, we have a Taobao group, we have Alipay. And people said, you are so smart. How could you make a company like that? Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, Jack hey. Welch, Larry Page, Mark Zuckerberg. The difference between those people and other people, they are always optimistic for the future. Mm. They never complain. They always try to solve the problems of the others. When you are optimistic, it's always opportunity. People, same here today. Jeff, where is the opportunity? I don't have a job. I don't have this, I don't have that. The best assets you have is that you are young. Don't complain. Let the other people complain. The opportunity always lies where people complain. Think about how you can make things different. And then when you think about this, start to do it. I saw a lot of people, young people, have fantastic ideas every evening. But in the morning, they go to the office same again. If you really want to be entrepreneur. You have to do the things before the other people do. You have to wake up before the other people wake up. You have to be more brave than the others. When I was young, I went to Hangzhou West Lake. There's a hotel. Many foreign visitors visit there. And I went there every morning, five o'clock, to practice my English. The foreign visitors come, I practice my English. I don't know why at that time. Mm. But I found everything the foreign visitors told me are so different from the things my parents told me, my teacher told me, and the newspaper I read. So since then, I think everything use my own brain, use your own brain to think. To everybody, to any person, tomorrow is new. Make the move, make the action. Whether investors believe in this or not, whether your friends believe it or not, whether your parents believe it or not, that's not important. You believe it, your team believe it, and work day and night on this. Make enough mistakes. You fall, you stand up. If you really want to work for yourself,
think about the others because only when the other people are successful, when the other people are happy, mm. you will be successful, you will be happy. Don't worry about the money. Money follow the people. People should follow the dreams. If you have a dream, just to go ahead. The question is, you have a dream. You have a dream and I speak. What is that thing? What is that thing? What is that challenges? What is it? Hmm? What is that thing you are complaining? <laughs> you are faced to. This young man became the richest man in Asia. Did you hear his story? <laughs> Did you hear his story? How can somebody start a business with $50,000 borrowed money? That's how he started. $50,000. And after first three years of doing it, he didn't make one naira. He was passing through his own examination of what to become the richest man in what? Asia. <laughs> Did you see what he faced? Ladies and gentlemen, like I said, all of us here will face one thing or the other. All of us here. Always understand this. When you are passing through your challenge, like I said, always have this in your mind. The enemy would love you to be alone. But guess what? Don't ever, never, ever be alone. See yourself passing through the exam, but don't ever stay alone. That is the third core thing you must remember. Always share your experience. If you check this young man, I'm telling you, he was not making a dime, but he was still coming out. He was still coming out, believing in his vision. He was still coming out, sharing his vision. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what it is. Don't stay alone. A lot of leaders, as I'm speaking to you, have given up in this business because they don't see themselves again moving up. Don't go and carry your own burden and problem. Start thinking that someone is behind your own examination of life. I set an exam for you. I set an exam for this person. I set an exam for this person. If you pass, we promote you. If you fail, you remain there. It's a simple, it's a simple thing. Life is setting the exam. And guess what? Don't go and start blaming, man. You are the person that made me to fail. Yes, you are the one that decided to fail. People have crossed through things and became whom they are today. Don't bother yourself. Learn from the people that have overcome. Learn from what they have done and be patient. That is it. That's the fifth thing you must remember. When it's getting tougher and tougher, don't go and hide yourself. Then the sixth thing you must remember is this. What is it? The sixth one is build and maintain relationship. Keep building, keep maintaining relationship. It is natural for you to be experiencing life challenges. And guess what? That same time, that is the time you will start scattering every relationship you have with people. That's time you start having a quarrels, series of quarrels, because you are transferring your aggression of your challenges, the pressure. When you are facing the pressure, you want to transfer the pressure on someone. This person is the reason why I'm giving up. This person is the reason why my business is not going. This person is the reason why everybody in my team are hating me. That level is the time you should even build and get maintain relationship. Don't start breaking your relationship. Don't let even your relationship break you. You are looking for whom to blame for your predicament. Please, if there is something, somebody who you will blame, blame what life, what life gives you. And tell yourself, man, this thing is coming to me because I'm about to shift to the next level. Then the seventh one, the seventh thing, you must have in your mind when you are facing any challenges, what? Always have this seventh one in your mind. If I pass this, <laughs> if I pass this, I will be promoted. Ladies and gentlemen, if I pass this thing I'm going through, I know if I pass through this, I will be promoted. Always have this in your mind. People have passed it and they were promoted. 
me, I will not be an exception. If I pass this, I will be promoted. If you have this, ladies and gentlemen, in your mind, you will overcome every challenges that is placed in front of you. Finally, what is, what is life currently testing you on? I want you to listen to this last video and listen to the story of this young woman. Then I will now start rounding up. What is life currently testing you on? There's a question. Listen carefully again to this woman. They see my disability, I see my ability. They call me disabled, I call myself differently able. There are some incidents that happen in your life. Those incidents break you, mm. deform you, but they mold you into the best version of you. And the same thing happened to me. I was 18 years old when I got married. My father wanted me to get married. And all I said was, if that makes you happy, I'll say yes. And of course, it was never a happy marriage. Mm. Just about after two years of getting married, I met a car accident. Somehow my husband fell asleep and the car fell in the ditch. He managed to jump out, saved himself. I'm happy for him. But I stayed inside the car and I sustained a lot of injuries. The list is a bit long, don't get scared. The wrist was fractured. Shoulder bone and collarbone were fractured. My whole rib cage got fractured. And because of the rib cage injury, lungs and liver were badly injured. I couldn't breathe. I lost urine and bowel control. That's why I have to wear the bag wherever I go. Three vertebra of my backbone were completely crushed and I got paralyzed for the rest of my life. I finally ended up in a hospital where I stayed for two and a half months. I underwent multiple surgeries. One day doctor came to me and he said, well, I heard that you wanted to be an artist, but you ended up being a housewife. I have a bad news for you. You won't be able to paint again because your wrist and your arm are so deformed, you won't be able to hold a pen again. Next day, doctor came to me and said, your spine injury is so bad, you won't be able to walk again. Because of your spine injury and the fixation that you have in your back, you won't be able to give birth to a child again. Mm. That day, I was devastated. I asked my mother, why me? And that is where I started to question my existence. Why am I even alive? And that is where I realized that the words have the power to heal the soul. Mm. My mother said to me, this too shall pass. God has a greater plan for you. I don't know what it is, but he surely has. And in all that distress and grief, somehow or the other, those words were so magical that they kept me going. One day I asked my brothers, I know I have a deformed hand, but I'm tired of looking at these white walls in the hospital and wearing these white scrubs. I'm getting tired of this. I want to add more colors to my life. I want to do something. Bring me some colors, bring me some small canvas. I want to paint. So the very first painting I made was on my deathbed, where I painted for the very first time. It was not just an art piece or just my passion. It was my therapy. And then I was discharged. And I went back home and I went back home and I realized that I have developed a lot of pressure ulcers on my back and on my hip bone. I was unable to sit. There were a lot of infections in my body, a lot of allergies. So doctors wanted me to lie down on the bed straight for not six months, for not one year, for two years. I was bedridden, confined in that one room, looking outside the window listening to the birds chirping mm. and thinking maybe there will be a time when we'll be going out with the family and enjoying the nature. That was the time where I realized how lucky people are. That is the time where I realized that the day I'm going to sit, I'm going to share this pain with everyone to make them realize how blessed they are and they don't even consider them lucky. Mm. That day I decided that I'm going to fight my fears. We all have fears. Fear of unknown. Fear of losing people. Fear of losing health. 
money. We want to excel in career. We want to become famous. We want to get money. We are scared all the time. So I wrote down one by one all those fears. And I decided that I'm going to overcome these fears one at a time. You know what was my biggest fear? Divorce. I was trying to cling on to this person who didn't want me anymore. But I said, no, I have to make it work. But the day I decided that this is nothing but my fear, I liberated myself by setting him free. And I made myself emotionally so strong that the day I got the news that he's getting married, I sent him a text that I'm so happy for you and I wish you all the best. And he knows that I pray for him today. Number two was, I won't be able to be a mother again. And that was quite devastating for me. But then I realized there are so many children in the world, all they want is acceptance. Mm. So there is no point of crying, just go and adopt. There will be tumors, there will be heartbreak. But let me tell you, those things are making you stronger for you to overcome to the next higher level. What is life currently testing you on? How painful it is? How painful it is? Do you want the pain of failure that you started it, you failed? Do you want the pain of failure? Or do you want the pain of success? That after all these things, I am more than a conqueror. Do you want the pain of failure? Because let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, one of these pain will come to you when life tests you. One of these pain will come to you. Why do you think that you cannot pass through the pain and overcome to live your dream? Why is this pain coming? It's because of your dream. I didn't dream it for you. <laughs> I didn't dream it for you. You dreamt it. You are the person that wanted to achieve those visions, those things. I am not a person. So when the examination of life is coming, it's coming because of your dream. Why do you think you cannot pass through this pain and overcome to live your dream? You are the only one that can decide to pass this examination of life. Only you are the one that will make that decision. And always know this, that with God on your side, you are unstoppable. God bless each and every one of you here that are still to the end of this meeting. I appreciate you all so much. If you apply even one quarter of everything I have taught you, you trust me, 
There is no challenges that will come in front of you that you cannot overcome. I appreciate each and every one of you here so much for staying all through this training. God bless you all for listening and for going through it. Please make sure you repeat this training over and over and over. And also, even in your cell meeting, make sure you repeat this training equally in your cell meeting. Discuss about it. It's what life comes with. And guess what? When you have fully known this, let me tell you, I'm going to dine with you at the top. Whatever the problem is, tell yourself, I am more than a conqueror. God bless you all. I appreciate you all. I love you all. I hope to see each and every one of you here at the top. So for the leaders that are in this meeting, try and repeat this training more. Let people understand it, that this is what it takes to get your dreams achieved. God bless you all. I appreciate you all. I love you all. And I release the grace of God upon your life that will increase you, that will give you that enablement that will give you that grace to overcome life challenges. The, the grace of God that will make you what? Step into your fears and overcome that fear. I release that grace upon you that you will cross through it and you will become a conqueror. Let it rest upon you. So shall it be in the name of Jesus. God bless you all. I appreciate you all. I love you all. My name still remains Dr. Victor, and I hope to dine with you all at the top. Let's go back to the activities of the day. Go and put in that daily activities. Go and put up with the grind. Trust me, you are getting closer in achieving your dream. God bless you all, and I hope to see you all one of these days.